first to Britain, where the Prime Minister David Cameron is due soon to address the Parliament after cutting short an overseas trip. It comes after a day of high drama in which media mogul Rupert Murdoch was grilled by politicians over his knowledge of and involvement in the phone hacking affair. But as Europe correspondent Philip Williams reports, Mr Murdoch got more than he bargained for. It was an invitation they couldn't refuse. There was no red carpet for these unwilling celebrities, a father and son bonding experience they could both do without. But after a weekend of coaching on style and substance, contrition was an early theme. First of all, I would like to say as well just how sorry I am and how sorry we are uh, to particularly the victims of illegal voicemail interceptions and to their families. One sentence. This is the most humble day of my life. Okay, thank you. I was absolutely shocked, appalled and ashamed when I heard about the Millie Dowler case only two weeks ago. Days earlier, Rupert Murdoch had been to see the Dowler family personally to offer his sincere apologies. What he probably didn't tell them was that News International had paid the private detective Glenn Mulcair's legal expenses. He was the one who'd hacked into the murdered schoolgirl's phone. And despite pleading guilty and going to jail, along with the News of the World's Clive Goodman, News International picked up the bill. And guess what? Four years later, they may still be paying. This is a serious question, Mr Murdoch Senior. Is it not time uh, for the organisation to say enough is enough. Uh, this man allegedly hacked the phone uh, of, of the murdered schoolgirl Millie Dowler. Uh, is it not time for, for your organisation to say uh, do your worst, You're, you behave disgracefully, we're not going to pay any more of your, your costs? I would like to do that. I don't know the status of what we're doing or indeed what his contract was or whether it still has any force. I do know that certain legal fees were, were paid uh, for Mr Mulcair by the company and I was as surprised and shocked to learn that uh, as, 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 as you are. It was the intense anger over the Dowler hacking that led to the closure of the news of the world, despite the fact most of the employees didn't even work for the company when these crimes were committed. Did you close the paper down because of the criminality? Yes, we felt ashamed of what had happened and thought we were going to bring it to a close. People lied to you and lied to their readers. We had <coughs> broken our trust with our readers. Said the impression with me, but it was the important point was we had broken our trust with our readers. In contrast to his father's direct manner, a rather more mercurial son, James, said he only became aware of the extent of the crisis after another hacking settlement involving actress Sienna Miller last year. My reaction immediately was to agree with the recommendation of the executives involved, which was that this was something that we should bring to the attention of the police uh, with respect to their ongoing investigations and perhaps new ones. But there were questions over the payment of hundreds of thousands of pounds to settle the first two hacking cases involving Max Clifford and Gordon Taylor. The suspicion that it was hush money. To most people looking at that, it sort of smells a bit. Mr Davies, I, I, I understand. Um, I understand where you're coming from here and I understand how, you know, these are big sums of money we're talking about, 100,000, 200,000, 600,000. This is that's a lot of that's a, that's a lot of money, and you look at that and you say, why would a company why would a company do that? What we knew and what I knew at the time was that we had senior distinguished outside counsel who we had gone to to say if this case was litigated and if we were to lose the case, if the company were to lose the case, what sort of damages would we expect to pay? And, and we were and we and the company received an answer that was that was substantial. As if the evidence wasn't gripping enough, then this. A protester tried to attack Rupert Murdoch with a pie. His wife Wendy launched a ferocious counter-attack, that now on the public record, after a jacketless Rupert returned for more. Uh, Mr Murdoch, your wife has a very good left hook. 
But while Wendy Deng was busy protecting her man, her husband was also defending another important woman in his life, the recently resigned Rebecca Brooks. Why did you not accept Rebecca Brooks's resignation when she first offered it? Because I believed her and I trusted her and I do trust her. And so why did you accept it the second time round? Hmm? Why did you accept in the event, it? In the event, she just insisted. She was at a point of and can you extreme tell us uh, anguish. The troubled Rebecca Brooks fronted the committee. She knew nothing of the hacking, abhors the practice, would never do it. I don't know anyone in their right mind who would authorise, no sanction, approve of anyone listening to the voicemails of Millie Dowler in those circumstances. I just, just don't know anyone who would think it was a right and proper thing to do. Despite the abject apologies and promises to do better, it appears no senior executive knew or suspected a thing. Somehow, what's described as industrial-scale hacking went on for years, totally unnoticed. But don't expect the boss to take responsibility for the company's failings. This terrible thing happened on your watch. Mr Murdoch, have you considered resigning? No. Why not? Because I feel that people I trusted, I'm not saying who, I don't know what level, but let me down and I think they behaved uh, disgracefully and betrayed the company and me and it's for them to pay. I think that frankly, I'm the best person to clean this up. Whether the shareholders agree remains to be seen. Philip Williams reporting.